After last week's great dev diary about upcoming 1.32 patch and the new DLC that we focused on the Northern Europe, where we got a lot of information about the Teutonic Order changes as well as Anglican religion changes and other free stuff, today it's time to get some more knowledge about Livian Order, about new ideas, new mission trees and also free changes to two other religions, Protestant and Reformed. If you want to get notified about the future videos, remember to subscribe to this channel, especially that we are on our way to hit 100,000 subscribers, while at the same time you can see that only 45% of you are subscribing right now. So most importantly, as Livian Order does not have that much of a successful history, similarly to the Teutonic Order, a big bunch of the mission tree is a what-if mission tree. First few missions are more generic, so protect Triga, to the Tonic Knights or taking care of the internal matters and actually the internal matters are a fairly nice change because in the past they were just adding more provinces, more nations and I think this is the key information that we just received. Due to freeze of the map and the hard block on introducing the new text to the game we have decided to take a more abstract approach on Livonian Confederation. So instead of adding more provinces and mini nations inside Livonian Ardor, they keep it as it was no changes, but they will share all of these inside nations as a privileges in the clergy state. Important information number two, they are increasing the amount of the privileges from four to six, which might be a little bit overpowered, but I think it might be a good direction considering how many privileges they introduced lately. So in a nutshell, there will be four bishopics inside Livon Order, each of one of them will be represented as an Easter privilege with some disadvantages and to get rid of them we can even dissolve bishopic and this will take two stability and cause the rebels. I don't think two stability is very worth it, so they might think about some different kinds of modifiers. I'd rather recommend increasing autonomy in the provinces or getting a gigantic amount of the hundreds for some amount of the years or the different ways is to purchase bishopic where we just pay the money to fuck off. After getting rid of the bishopics, we can finalize the Protect Riga mission, which will season the lad from the archbishopics and is giving us 10% crown lad. Okay, that's some kind of an advantage. And the strengthen our authority mission is gonna get us the event, the future of the Livion Order. We can choose either to unlock the Livion mission path, that's more focused on the probably tall gameplay, or the Crusader mission path, so one similar to the Teutonic Order that was just more focused on going east and uniting all of the Christian churches, Orthodox and Catholic ones. The Livian path will be also having a big focus on colonization, both to the New World and to India, so that might be an actual interesting colonial gameplay from the Baltic Sea, that's not something that you see so much. These missions give, are giving us not only you know, some kind of acclaims or reach, but also some permanent bonuses like 10% trade efficiency or 10% global trade power. At the same time, it does not make much sense to take trade from the New World if it's all landing in the Lubeck, which we do not control. So there's also a path in the mission tree that is allowing us to go into Lubeck and defeating this nation is actually giving us 4 years of our trading gum and also 50 trade power in this note. Other part of this mission tree is allowing us to secularize the Livonian order, which allow us to form Livonia with new ideas, which I'll show you a little bit later, and to will also change our type of the government to monarchy. Then there's some innovation that I don't think I ever saw in the UFO. So the reform the government mission will unlock us six different events, three choices in each of them, where we'll be deciding what type of the government reform we are gonna enact as a tier one. And this might end up in one of these governments and I actually want to show you them because as they mentioned it's either a path that is focused on tall gameplay or white gameplay or something in between. So you can see for example even on military monarchy is having a death cost and monarch military skill on the cost of the GAF capacity. The Livonian plutocracy is death cost as well. Look at good plus modifier and monarch admin skill and GAF capacity modifier. Then the theocracy is more focused on converting the provinces and the bonuses to the tolerance of the true faith. The Livonian mercenary state is the mercenary cost to manpower the discipline. That's actually some cool type of the roleplay. Livonian elective monarchy. Elective monarchy. Ooh, election by lottery. I hate it <laughs> already. <laughs> a Livonian constitutional monarchy is actual unrest and yearly legitimacy. And there's no nobility state. Kinda unfortunate. 
mercenary companies do not cause army professionals, I did not see that earlier. And Livon Militar Monarchy is having a militarization mechanic, this is getting more and more interesting. Livon Diplomatic Monarchy is very focused on diplomacy, so and having tons of the vassals on the cost of manpower and force limit. Livon Imperial Reign is co-creation cost and gaff capacity, oh, co-creation, so instead of doing vassals you just conquer everything, co-creation cost stacking is always nice. Livon Monarchy is simply gaff capacity and unrest and finally Livon Stage General is something very similar to the Dutch government with the death cost modifier. They also highlighting that this part of the mission tree is focused on playing doll and devouring your lands, building universities, etc. Moving to the Crusader path, as mentioned, it's very similar to what we saw last week on the Teutonic Order, so I will not go deeply into it, but I'll more focus on what kind of bonuses they are doing here. So first of all, they are boosting the tax meta because provinces with churches we have a privilege that is getting 15% local manpower and provinces with cathedrals are getting plus 33% local manpower. Tax meta guys. And we can form a crusading empire that is having militarization mechanic. So they're spreading this militarization mechanic to more and more nations right now. It's having the missionary strength, thrones of the true faith, permanent castles back against neighbors and heavens, so pretty much that was Vult, and manpower in the true faith provinces. That's it for what will be coming to the Livonian Order. I think it's very interesting and it's gonna be as exciting as the gameplay of the Teutonic Order. And there are also changes to the Protestant and Reformed religion that they are introducing. They're very straightforward, so Protestants are getting free more aspects, which is IE impact, monthly war exhaustion and monthly autonomy change, Why the reformed religion is getting different additional bonuses for the favor. So trade focus is having additional trade steering, which does not that much matter unless you have a big empire with a lot of uh, trade routes. War focus is getting 20% manpower cover speed, that is super strong. And stability focus is the death meta. Perfect. Finally, reformed can play tall. Some new additional national ideas. Livonian order idea seems to be very nice and straightforward. Memper and the true faith process, I absolutely love it. Livonia idea seems very strong. There's infantry command ability 15%, land morale 10%, death cost meta, and even naval bonuses and bonuses to the colonization gameplay. Finally, Latgalia is, I think, nothing's really very interesting, maybe except 30% improved relations modifier. Same for currently, I don't think there's anything major over here, some really good bonuses like manpower recovery speed or global manpower focused ideas. This is what the color of the will be looking like, so it'll be close to the Prussian blue. As a final note, they said that there was a very good feedback on some of the changes they introduced last week and they decided that taking electorate from your vassal in the HRE is not gonna be only for the mission tree of the tonic order but it's gonna be available for everyone. Same as the bonus for the Grand Orthodox Autonomy for the Poland, Lithuania and Venice. Okay and next week we are gonna look into missions of Riga along some extra government reforms that they are planning to add to the game. I think this looks more and more exciting. Just fingers crossed that besides Baltic nations and Scandinavia also Poland will get some love in this patch. So guys, if you enjoyed this kind of the videos and you would like me to do more in the future, so talking about the dev diaries and what I think about the different changes, remember to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel to get notified about the future content. Bye!